Hi everyone, it's Carla from Casey Create, and I wanted to uh, just show you the finished uh, pottery that I've been creating over the last three months. In my videos, I was showing you this huge body of work, and it's from one of the shows I've done um, in previous years, but an example of what all I create to go in the annual sale that we do at our clay studio. Um, I like to do hand building, but I also like to throw on the wheel. Here is an image of me throwing off the hump, which is when you center one large um, hump of clay and make several pieces from that same piece of clay. And I was working on mugs here. Um, and I do love creating mugs. It's one of my favorite things. And so I've got um, about three or four from this single lump of clay. And then here's an image of the cups firming up and getting ready for me to attach handles to them. And this is what I do probably every morning, my cup of coffee out of a handmade cup um, in a little quiet time. I like to do dinnerware. This is an image of some plates and canisters. Um, and I also thought I'd show you that there are some mishaps once in a while. This is some bisqueware that I neglected to let dry well enough and so the bottoms exploded. And when that happens, you just got to clean it all up and start all over again. And a lot of times explosions happen not from air bubbles in the clay, but just because it didn't have proper drying time. So here's all the bisqueware. It was serviced for 12. So there's plates and salad plates, cups, bowls, and canisters. I made these for a lady's, a lady who wanted dishes for her mountain home. And that's the finished product. I was pretty happy with those. On a certain, any given day of my job, I could take um, the Claymobile and do projects with the uh, public school that we have are in cooperation with. So here I was doing African masks with a middle school. Or I also participate once a month in the artisan sale at Williams Sonoma, which is a real high honor that they invite me to come and sell my wear. This is all pre-COVID, however. So hopefully I'll be able to do that again. I absolutely love rolling coils of clay. It's almost therapeutic for me. And so um, working on the potter's wheel is fun, but I think my favorite method is rolling coils and weaving with the coils of clay. And here I am finishing off a woven bowl. Um, I make the actual woven form on a balloon for the bowls. These are my enchanted forms that I make uh, with inspiration from the forest. So they're usually in nice green colors with uh, brown vining and they can be very whimsical. Here's a finished one. They're probably my favorite form to weave. And um, these are fired in a gas kiln at a really high temperature. This is what I like to call my French woven uh, platters and pieces. I take a white um, slip or underglaze, paint it on and wipe it off. The other wonderful thing about these is you can warm them in the oven, wrap your bread in a tea towel, and it keeps your bread warm. And there's two smaller images of the earthenware or stoneware with the white. And then these are Kind of medium size and they could serve as a berry basket, berry bowl baskets. These are miniature ones that are very time consuming but so rewarding once I finish them because it's not faux weaving, it's true woven forms. And nature is definitely my inspiration. I love the woods, I love the woodland forest, I love the colors that you can see in the forest and the animals, so I take a lot from tree bark and even the texture of the fur and um, trees. Definitely, I'm inspired by trees. I love all types of trees. Here, these are aspen trees. We took these pictures in the mountains of Arizona. And then a lovely friend always graces her table with one of the pieces I gifted her, and this is one where we were having lunch. I love the hydrangea. And so I make these little pots called hydrangea pots. 
make the wheel, the pots on the wheel, and then the leaves out of clay. And they just serve sweet little bunches of hydrangeas really well. And then, of course, lace is definitely inspirational for me when I create, especially my white, what I call loopy dishes. Um, so here's an image of some of the whiteware. It's made with white clay, and then I glaze it with a white snowflake glaze. And this is a display of some of that work um, in one of our past sales. And then one of the videos I was showing you, the leaf dish, and I use a sycamore leaf. I roll it vein side down into the clay, and that gives a really nice imprint of the leaf. And then I just attach a little stylized stem and cut it out and drape it over a hump mold. And that way it has kind of the, the look of a leaf that fell out of the fall leaf tree, you know, and sort of cupped a little bit. But they serve as great little dishes for pretty much anything. These were bisque fired and now I'm going to glaze them. And I use just a jarred glaze that I brush on. It's an old picture of me glazing in the studio. But this is the leaf glazed and once it reaches temperature, the vibrant color comes out. This is the finished leaf dish. I was unloading the kiln so I thought I would take a few pictures. I have to do a voiceover because these pieces are now already in the studio for the sale. But I was happy with how they turned out. I think I may have shown you the sunflower dishes as well. And this is where they are bisque fired and I brushed on iron oxide wash, which is like a stain. I think it's one of my favorite pieces. And here they are in the bottom of the kiln. I was very happy when I took the shelf off to see they fired nicely. So this is them with the muted earth tone colors. And these dishes can be eaten out of their fire to a cone five temperature and they're food safe. So I just kind of scanned over all of them with my camera right after they came out of the kiln. They were probably even still a little warm here, but um, I knew I wouldn't be able to do a live video of these pieces because it was I had to pack them up and take them to the sale. You'll see a little kiln wash stuck to the bottom, which is that white chalky stuff, but we sand that off. I like how you can see the veining of the leaves. There's that tiny little one that you saw before it was fired. The pieces do shrink about 7%, anywhere from 7 to 10%, I'd say. This one was woven more like a pie lattice. And again, like I said, you can warm these dishes in the oven and then wrap your bread in a towel and they'll, they'll stay nice and warm. That's a nice, I don't know, it's probably 10 to 12 inches in diameter. This is a great fine basket. I love doing these too. I like for the clay coils to resemble the vining of grape vine. So I'm sorry, this isn't a really good image, but I wanted to show you the finished, the finished pieces. And this one is a little, probably six inch in diameter fairy basket. This was a professional um, image of one of my leaf ditches. There's the grapevine fairy basket again. But I really just wanted to come back and show you the finished pieces. Um, a caterer actually purchased this one for his display for bread. So anyway, again, thanks for watching. I really I wanted to just come back and make sure you got to see 
the finished pieces um, that I was actually creating in my previous videos. And I'll still come back and show you the finished gingerbread house as well. But I'm very grateful that I can do a job that I absolutely love and get paid for it. That's a blessing. This is the Christian fish ornament that I like to gift. But that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again soon.